Hey Phil, what you doing? Oh, hey Mark. Just looking at all these numbers and things and code all over this motor. What Are what you talking about the motor nameplate? Yeah, what, what's going on here? I'll tell you what, let's turn the motor off, let's take it in the lab, and I'll explain it to you. Sounds great to me. All right, now that we have a motor in the studio, what is the nameplate? An electrical motor nameplate is the label on the motor that tells important details about it. Think of it as the motor's ID card. So why is it important to have this on the motor? Well, you don't want to put the wrong motor on your machine, which can cause major damage. All right, well, let's take a look at this nameplate and let's go through each item and see what each of them mean. Absolutely. All right, well, we might as well start at the top. We got cat number and spec. What do those two things mean? So the cat number is the catalog number. For instance, ball door, that is their number internally for their part number for this motor. Depending on the motor manufacturer, that can be different. The spec is the specification number, the internal number to ball door, which describes what is in this motor. All right, let's move down to HP, which I assume is horsepower because I love cars. <laughs> Horsepower is a unit of measurement that describes how powerful something is, especially engines and motors. Think of, of horsepower as a way to measure how strong a motor is. For example, a car with more horsepower will generally be faster and more powerful than one with less horsepower. Can I use a motor with more horsepower than the specs tell me I need? The horsepower is designed for the machine's application. Uh -huh. So undersizing or oversizing the motor can cause problems. Oh, okay, so you really wanna kinda of narrow in exactly what you need. Correct. Okay, so right underneath horsepower, we seem to have volts. I assume that's voltage. You are correct with that. The voltage of electric motor is like the pressure of the electricity needed to make the motor work. In this case, the 208-230-460 is not a formula to solve. It's stating that the motor can be wired for lower voltage, which is the 208-230, or wired for the higher voltage, of 460 volts. And what happens if you screw this up? Um, it could catch on fire. Oh, okay, cool. That's a pretty major problem, I get it. Yes, it is, yes it is. So the next one, it looks like amps. What, could you explain that for me? So amps measure how much electrical current a motor uses to operate. Think of amps like the flow of water. Just as a bigger pipe allows more water to flow through, higher amps mean more electrical current is flowing through the motor. If a motor uses more amps, it generally means it's working harder or is more powerful. So what happens if you miss your amperage number? You go too high or you go too little? If a motor gets too much or too little current, it may not work properly or it could be damaged. Just as the voltage above, the 13.9-13.4-6.7, it is stating when wired to a lower voltage, the amp draw will be 13.9 to 13.4 amps, depending on the incoming voltage level, or 6.7 amps, for the higher voltage of 460 volts. Oh, okay, so do you need to be able to predict the two together on one or the other? Correct. You can't mix and match those two. All right, so moving down the list, we have RPM. What does that stand for? So RPM is revolutions per minute. Measures how fast the motor shaft is spinning. Higher RPM means the motor is spinning faster, which can make machinery move or operate quicker. Lower RPM, means the motor is spinning more slowly, which might be useful for tasks that need slower, more controlled movement. I see one number here. Is that a max RPM? Is that an adjustable RPM? Or is that just set? So when the voltage is applied to the motor, we'll give the example of 460 volts at 60 hertz. It's gonna run a certain RPM rated for that. That's where a VFD, a variable frequency drive, comes into play. We're able to change that speed on a motor, which is important for matching it to the job it needs to do. All right, the next one looks a little weird. It just says frame and it's just a number. It doesn't really have any sort of reference. What, what does this mean? The frame size of electrical motor refers to the physical dimensions and the shape of the motor's housings. Phil, that's a very important number right there. This is actually a standard. That's a NEMA number, which defines the shaft, the size of the motor, the mounting dimensions, mm -hmm. everything. As being a standard, if you have different manufacturers such as Allen Bradley, Marathon, you can take those motors and put them in the place of this one. All right, so let's just move sideways and we have HZ, what does that stand for? So HZ stands for Hertz. The Hertz rating is important because it affects how the motor runs. It measures how many times the electrical current changes direction every second in alternate current or AC motors. In the US, standard AC motors use 60 Hertz. 
mean the current changes 60 times per second. In other parts of the world, like Europe, standard motors use 50 hertz. So what happens then if I put a 50 hertz on a 60 hertz or vice versa? So if you put a 50 hertz on a 60 hertz supply, um, the motor's actually gonna run faster than the rated nameplate. And if you put 50 hertz on a 60 hertz motor, it runs slower. slower. Correct. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, the next one, uh, pH. Uh, is that acidity? No, it actually stands for phase. So the phase tells you how many separate electrical streams are used to power the motor, affecting its performance and the type of equipment needed to run it. So in terms of a motor, there is single phase and there's three phase power. What is single phase and three phase? Well, single phase, this is like having one set of electrical waves coming into the motor. It's common for homes and small appliances. It works well for small motors. Three phase, this is like having three sets of electrical waves coming into the motor, each slightly offset from the other. It is used in large industrial motors and equipment. Dealing with drives are gonna be three-phase AC motors. All right, let's move down, but we seem to be getting a little off the electricity side of things, and it looks, it's very strange. What is a SIRF, S-E-R-F? That's gonna be service factor. The service factor of electrical motor tells how much extra load the motor can handle beyond its normal operating capacity. It's a way to ensure that the motor can handle occasional overloads in tough conditions without breaking down. So if there's like a stoppage in the line or something that the motor's controlling, that amperage is gonna spike and that's how much spike it can take? Correct. Okay, okay. All right, so moving slightly off to the right there, we have code and an M. What code are we looking at here? What does this mean? So the code right there, that's gonna be LRA, locked rotor amps. So this is starting on a load when it's stationary stopped. Right or if the motor is spanning, the load causes the motor to stop and the inrush of current is gonna be extremely high. Mm -hmm. Understanding the LRA helps ensure that the motor's power supply and wiring can handle the high current during the startup or without overheating or getting damaged. So it doesn't have anything to do with the service factor, but it does have a lot to do with like startup and slow down. And the size of wiring because you're gonna pull more current. Right, so what does the M refer to specifically? So M is the range of how many amps it's gonna pull. There's different alphanumeric characters that represent different um, current ranges. Moving slightly off to the right there, we have DES and then a letter B. What is DES? DES is destination. B is gonna be a letter code and a chart. And what it refers to is the torque speed curve. And what it's saying, a rated motor is gonna have torque and it's gonna have speed. The motor is rated for a certain RPM at a certain frequency and a certain torque or current. That's the maximum that motor can put out. If you overspeed the motor, RPM wise or frequency, the torque is actually gonna go down. It's gonna do less work. You're not gonna have as much rotational force mm -hmm. at the higher speed as you were the nominal speed. So it deals with the torque curve itself and B is where it lands on that torque curve. Correct. Moving on, next to that we have class. What is class on this? Class is the insulation code of the motor. The insulation code of an electrical motor tells how well the motor's internal parts are protected. It's the actual insulation factor that the insulation can handle without breaking down that's around the wires. Once the motor gets overheated, the insulation breaks down and then we have a fire. I see a letter at the end of this. Uh, how many different classes are there? So Phil, there's actually um, four classes. Class A can handle up to 221 degrees Fahrenheit. Class B can handle up to 266 degrees Fahrenheit. Class F can handle up to 311 degrees Fahrenheit. And Class H, which can handle up to 356 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, we're cooking in there. All right, moving down one, we have NEMA non if what's that that's gonna be nema nominal efficiency is a standard measure that shows how well an electrical motor converts electrical power into mechanical power if a bulb uses 100 watts of electricity but only gives out 80 watts of light it's not very efficient efficiency tells how much of the input energy is actually being used for doing work so i'm seeing this as a percentage uh so Obviously these things aren't 100% efficient. Where does the rest of the percentage go? Like it's not 100% efficient, where's the rest of it? It's gonna be given off as heat in the motor. And also it takes a certain amount of energy to energize this motor to create the magnetic fields. Oh, okay. The way the motor is assembled and put together and designed determines its efficiency. You wanna get the highest efficiency possible. It's gonna be less wasted energy. It's gonna be less cost on your energy bill. So moving on, we have another percentage. PF, what does that mean? So that's gonna be the power factor of electrical motor. It measures how effectively the motor uses electrical power when it's doing work. Think of it like fuel efficiency in a car. A motor with higher power factor uses electrical power more effectively. Uh, the next one, we have rating. What is this rating? So the temperature rating of electrical motor 
tells you how hot the motor can get before it becomes unsafe or starts to malfunction. Unlike the rating before that we talked about with the internal windings, uh -huh. calls current is going to produce heat. That's the internal heat. Oh. This is actually the ambient heat outside of the motor that it can handle. Are they the same sort of like temperatures for the most part, or is it wildly different? Typically the motors that they're working hard, they're going to pull more current. Mm -hmm. um, more current's going to produce more heat. Mm -hmm. And that's why the internally, the, um, the insulation on the windings are going to be rated higher. Ambient is going to be the actual environment, whether it's outside or in a room, air conditioned room, mm -hmm. that's going to be the outside of the, um, the motor itself, which is going to help keep the motor cool. So the next one we have is N E N C L. What is E N C L? Well, Phil, that's going to be the enclosure rating or the enclosure type. The enclosure type of electrical motor describes how the motor is protected from external conditions like dust, water, and physical damage. Could you give me some examples of these ratings? One example is the open drip proof, which is ODP, totally enclosed fan cooled, which is TEFC, which is very common. And the one less common is, could be explosion proof, the XP. That's really more for hazardous type explosion environments. Oh, exciting. Seems kind of obvious, but why is this important to your motor choice? Knowing the enclosure type helps you choose the right motor for your environment, ensuring it operates safely and lasts longer. So Mark, I'm looking at the, the side of the plate here. It looks like there's just these symbols. W what do these represent? That's the safety groups. Standard safety groups for electrical motors are guidelines that ensure motors are built and used safely. Could you give me some examples? Like I, it's, these things are kind of hard to read. What, what would I look up if I'm looking for these? So some of the examples out there are UL, which is Underwriter Laboratories. That's typically the one you see in North America. IEC is International Electrotechnical Commission, which you usually see that pretty much in the um, European community. I mean, you do have a NEMO rating, which is National Electrical Manufacturers Association, and you do have an ANSI standard, the American National Standards Institute. And there's also the CE, which is also another form of European. And with all these standards that are on the motor, it can be sold into these different countries. So this is a group of engineers, a third party, that is testing and observing these motors and then giving their stamp of approval? Correct. Okay. Well, let's go on to something I can actually read, which uh, it says bearings. What is going on here? What are these numbers? What do they mean? So the bearing code is a series of letters and numbers that describe the specific type and size of the bearings used. So it's pretty much the bearing that's in the front and the back of the motor. That's the actual bearing part number that is used. So if you ever have to replace those bearings, it gives you the actual part number for it. We'll use an example here, 6205-2RS. The 62 is the series or the type of the bearing. The 05 is the size. That's the inner and outer diameter of the bearing. And the 2RS represents the type of seals, two rubber seals on each side. So knowing the bearing code can really help you with uh, maintenance and replacing these bearings to you know, get you back up and running again quickly. You're correct, Phil. It allows you to put the correct bearing into the motor. All right, we got one more here, and it's a CC rating. What is that? So the CC rating is the continuous current rating. It tells you the max amount of electrical current that the motor can handle safely for a prolonged period of time without overheating or getting damaged. As you can see, there's a voltage beside the rating mm -hmm. and also a current. At that starting voltage, the motor can pull this amount of current without overheating. Again, it's continuous without overheating. This is a long-term thing opposed to the spikes that we were talking about earlier. We were talking about the service factor earlier, mm -hmm. which was like 15% above. Yeah. That was just a, for a momentary in time. Continuous at that high end will cause overheating, but the continuous current, you can run at that amount of current without overheating the motor. Well, Mark, thanks for going through this label. There was a lot of information just kind of in this small little package here. It's very important to everything that uh, goes into the factory. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Phil, that's part of my job.